Hallo ihr Lieben, ich freue mich, dass wir heute ein Live haben mit einem ganz, ganz besonderen Gast, nämlich mit unserer rumänischen Tierschützerin Delia und sobald sie hier im Chat ist, lade ich sie mal ein, sodass sie hinzukommen kann. So, mal schauen, ob es klappt. Da ist sie! <lacht> Hallo! Wir machen das Interview natürlich heute auf Deutsch. No, uh, I'm just kidding. <lacht> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid to speak. <lacht> We will make the interview, of course, in English, because your English is very, very good. Um, I have to say sorry for my English, but I think everybody will understand us because your English is so good. So <laughs> I think it, usually you ask me, do you understand my Deutsch? And I say yes, a little bit. And now I would ask you, do you understand my Deutsch? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I understand your Deutsch very good. <laughs> yeah, when it's in writing, yes. But when I speak, no, I'm, I'm too ashamed. I, I think I, I'm, I'm, I speak like a further Russian dialect. Of German. <laughs> no, but uh, you are learning German very well and very fast because yeah. your son is speaking uh, German very good, right? Yes, he is already two years and five months now. And Christy, my man, he always speaks German with him. And now he uh, selected, selects how he responds to us. Okay, so when he talks to Christy, he says, Zoke, Shue. And when he talks to me, he says in Romanian, you know, pantalon, chaussette. <laughs> <laughs> Great. It's, really It's fun. Good. Yeah. Um, so let's start. I'm very proud to have you here uh, in the live interview because um, we know us for a long, long time and you are not just a very, very good friend of mine. You are a very special rescuer in Romanian with yeah you are doing a great job and I think a lot of people can learn things from you and um, so I think let's start tell everybody a bit Thank about you. you who are you how old are you from where are you what are you doing so everybody who don't know you can uh, can know now who you are okay Hello everybody, uh, I am Delia, I am from Brasov in Romania. Brasov is a, a city right in the middle of Romania, it's a very touristical place. A lot of people come here for relaxation and tourism where there's not corona situation all over the planet. Uh, I am uh, 30, man, three years old now. <laughs> I'm 33 years old. Uh, I have been rescuing animals for five years. I have a husband and a son. He is two years and uh, five months old. And I have a very big shelter of 7,000 7, square meters where we rescue 250 dogs. We have a team of uh, 10 caretakers who are there every single day to care for these animals because our most, the most important thing that we want to do is to make rescue in a professional and very good quality way so that we can show that also in Romania you can uh, rescue dogs in a, in a good way and you can also make illustration and you can also make education and um, we want to actually be an example for anybody else rescuing animals in Romania. Really great. Before we start uh, talking about animal rescue, um, someone asked about the vegan food because you are a vegan person, you don't eat yes, animals. Vegan, and, yes. <laughs> and the people are very interested um, in how it is to eat vegan in Romania. I know <laughs> how it is, it's great, but maybe you can tell a bit about that. Vegan, <laughs> vegan! I've been a vegetarian since I was 14, so almost 20 years now. And I have my cat, Vasile. <laughs> You know, going down, <laughs> okay. Um, so I've been a vegetarian since I was 14. Uh, and then I, I am vegan since uh, more than three years now. I've been completely vegan when I was uh, pregnant with my son. And everybody in Romania was panicking, especially my doctor. What are you eating? What are you doing? Are you crazy? But all my blood tests and everything was perfect. And I have a healthy young man who, is, um, who will eventually become vegan when he is big enough to understand the reasons why we are vegan. 
being vegan in Romania is very difficult because if we don't you don't find so easy, easily as you find in German the good cheeses and the good uh, fake meat and everything. But the good news is that um, people are starting to see that this is a very good uh, business and they are starting to make a lot of companies. And now we have also fake meat in Romania. Uh, there's some traditional uh, meat in the in a very long shaped form and it's called michi. And everybody who eats meat eats this at festivals and carnivals and everything. And this is my favorite. I haven't eaten michi for 20 years and now I have a chance. <laughs> I have to eat so much michi until... <laughs> yes, so it... It's a bit like in Germany, it's more and more in common, right? Yes, it, it's becoming more and more in trend and you find a lot of uh, new things if you search online. But in stores, like in big supermarkets, you don't find it so easily. So you have yes. to be very specific and intentive to find what you're looking for. It's possible, but it's not so easy. It is, but also our culture is that you... Uh, The, the woman always cooks, you know, so we don't go out so much. Uh, Romania is not such a rich country. So I'm often, I am used to cooking uh, a lot of vegan things, uh, traditional meals, but vegan for me and my family. Okay, so now from cows and pigs, we don't eat. We will no. come to the dogs and the cats okay. at your shelter. And a question which comes very, very often is how... How do you start? Did you start? How does it come that you have a shelter with with 250 dogs? Do you have this special re relationship with dogs from your childhood or what was your story? <laughs> no, actually, I was afraid of dogs for a very, very long period in my life until I, with uh, the man that I was before, Christy, we decided to take a dog because we thought it would help me with my panic. I was very, very afraid of dogs before. Uh, it's it has so funny that you were yes, afraid I know. <laughs> When we were very little, when we were children, you know that in Romania, the situation with stray dogs is more than 30 years uh, old. And when we were children, my brother was bitten by a dog. And the, that traumatic situation in my head went directly into my subconscious and I was always afraid of the teeth of the dog. I never uh, thought that the teeth were uh, were attached to a head who had a brain, who had a body. I never thought to, uh, to learn about the body language and everything else. But when I got my first dog, I started learning and then I saw, you know, it's not so bad, the teeth don't kill you. It's, it was all in my head. And then I, I just got the blockage out of my head and it was good. Unfortunately, As many other Romanians do right now, we bought a dog from a breeder and it wasn't a good breeder and he died when he was one and a half years old because his heart was very big and it, he had a congenital defect. And in his honor, I started volunteering in public shelters. And when I saw the, the hard situation of dogs in Romania and when I saw the reality that is very well hidden from the public, you know, you don't... Nobody talks about it in the news. You don't see it everywhere. You get used to all the dogs living on the streets and it's something like, it's normal, you know? It's like trees going, growing in the city. You, they are just there and you know they're there. And when I saw how hard it is, I said, okay, I have, I, I, I have the knowledge. I have the power. I can do this. And I started with one dog. I rescued my first dog and then my second dog and then my third dog. And then when I eventually ended up having 70, I said, okay, I need to do something. And then I started a meat shelter in a warehouse where I put all my dogs because it was almost impossible for me to go check on all the dogs every single day. And I had a million fosters and all my friends and all my family, they had a dog that I found on the street and they were taking care of it. And then the warehouse got sold and I didn't have that money to buy it. So um, I was lucky, now I see it as lucky, that, that my job got cut off. And then I got some money from my job because it got cut off. And I also made a loan at the bank. And now we're here. <laughs> <laughs> so then you, you found the land where your shelter yes. is now. And yes. you start building the shelter. I 
I think when Karina oh, and I was talking about construction, <laughs> when when we were there the first time, there were just a little bit some cages, very small, yeah. but and now it's it's so big and so many houses and so uh, so so much better, so very cool. You you made such a great job in the last years and built and built and built, so they I have a better life was... there. I, I had a, a vision, a vision, you know, I think this is what lacks a lot of people all over the world, you know, they don't have the vision, they don't know what they want to do. But I knew that the shelter had to uh, have good conditions for the dog, that we have to use good materials, that I wanted to make it bigger, that I wanted to rescue animals, and then I wanted to do it in a good way. And then everything fell into place. We got to know each other, then you made Wunderrettung, and then we started getting bigger and bigger. And I think it, it's all because we have the same heart and we have the same connection and we, we have the same principles and we want to do the same things for the dogs. And yes. I think the, the very important thing is that, uh, and this was something which uh, made something with me because you had a vision, you had goals, you, were, you are and you was very focused and you knew what you want and said, uh, it must be good for the dog, not just rescuing, it must be sustainable and um, education, castration, you uh, saw a big picture and it was not just a dream. When you talked about that, everybody uh, felt that it can be real. And I think that was the thing which was very special and because why you are now here. Because it can be real. You know what you have in your head and what you have in your heart, I think can become reality if you take action and you do something about it. And then everything falls into place. And now we are here, we, we have... Uh, the sanctuary, we have the playground, we have good caretakers, we have so many dogs going into adoption, we've made partner with only people who are uh, have the same energy and the same uh, commitments as, as we do, so everything is falling into place, but I think it's because um, you know, you attract the, the, the things that you want in your life and the, the energy and the vibration that you show into the world, it comes back to That's true, that's true. But was it always easy? <laughs> that, <laughs> whoever asked that question never was to Romania. I am very, very sure it was never easy. Not even now. It, it's not easy now. I am a very optimistic person and I like to uh, laugh a lot and I want to be an optimist and I want to uh, see only the good things in life. But Honestly, reality is, is that it's very, very difficult. I had so many times when I would break down. I had so many times when I would cry, when I would feel overwhelmed, when I felt I couldn't uh, do this by myself, that you always, you know, hit rock bottom. It's, it's impossible with so many emotions when you rescue so many dogs and then you, you see that no matter how much you rescue, there's always going to be another one to rescue and another one. And It's, it's hard for anybody, no matter how small or big you are, you, you, can, you, you will always hit the maximum that you can do. And I've had so many times when I cried in the bathroom and Christy came, Christy, my man, came and said, okay, it's going to be fine. You're going to get back together. You're going to do this better next time. Whenever a dog dies, because this is life, you know, dogs die and you, there's nothing you can do about it. I, I, at the beginning, I was very upset. Now, I, of course, I'm now upset, but I see it also as their destiny and that we do the best that we can with whatever we have to rescue every, every dog that comes to our shelter. But sometimes, fate is not on our side. And maybe this was the road, this was the destiny of the dog. It, it was hard in the beginning of the years, I remember, We would, uh, I would pray and ask for food every single week on Facebook. And I would ask anybody to donate even 10 euros so that we can buy food again and again for the dogs. Uh, we used very cheap food and very, um, you know, it was like five euro a bag of food in Romania and it wasn't the good, the good kind, but it was all we could afford. Uh, we didn't have the good installation that we have now. We didn't have the clinic. You would go, uh, we would go in the winter time 
with the hose from the water supply in our car to keep it warm so that the water doesn't freeze on the hose. It was a dream back then, you know, to have what we have now, a playground, a clinic where we can make a station, where we can keep the dogs and the cats when they are sick, where we can have a heating system and come back inside when it's freezing and it's minus 20 degrees to warm ourselves. In the first year, we would go to the car to get warm and then come back and work some more. And the buckets of water would get frozen. The, the water on the, on the hose until it reached the buckets would froze. And then we would have to go again to the car and come back. It was horrible. Yeah, so you did a lot. So it's much better now. But of course, you can't compare your situation in Romania and your shelter with a German shelter. Yes. That's something different. <laughs> The 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 the, only, the reason is I mean I I would love to have a German shelter I would love it because it's clean it's sophisticated it's big it's made of super good materials that last a lifetime it's made like it's made like a house you know a house with indoor and outdoor in Germany you have so many volunteers so many good people who understand why it's important to go and interact with the dogs you know, the the your level of consciousness is is so elevated you know your social consciousness about interaction with animals and in romania we have a few volunteers you can count them on your hands but they are the ones that come all the time and they understand our mission and they understand that without them our dogs would have few exercise fewer play dates uh, fewer interactions with people and with the outside fewer walkings with on lead and and tea and, and treats and play time and everything good Yes, but uh, it becomes more and more. So, so it's a good way. And it is a good way because I always want to improve. The, this is, I think, another uh, thing that I, I and we have different is that we always want to improve and we want to make more and we want to make better. A lot of shelters in Romania, they are the same since years. Nobody invests, nobody wants to change, but not us. We are always, always doing something better and you can see it. You, we yes. have an impact locally Locally, with our castration campaign, with the things that we've built, with the animals that we've rescued until now and the ones that we gave for adoption, you can see it. there are fewer animals on the streets. There are more people that are calling us for the castration campaign. People are getting understanding. Uh, the project that we have with education, they are still ongoing, but they're only ongoing on online because we cannot have children coming to the shelter right now because of corona. But the bigger picture is that People are understanding what what we're talking about, you know, finally. <laughs> yes, that's true. And um, you gave up your job. And the people are asking if you earn money with rescuing the dogs because you are the president of your own organization. And of course, you have to live from something. You also have to buy food for you and for your son. And so the people ask if you live from the money you get for your organization. <laughs> No, I, I don't live because I couldn't live with myself if I take money from the dogs for myself. I am very lucky because my man earns a lot of money with his company and I am not somebody who lives with uh, high conditions. I don't buy so many things for me. I am very modest. I have the same clothes. I, I, don't, I wear the same shoes. I am, uh, my heart and my soul and my head is always focused on the dogs. So I don't care how I look or how I dress. The only makeup I ever wear is this line that you see on my eye and that's it. And it, it, for me, if I have food and a roof on top of my head and I know that my dogs are healthy and my son is healthy and my family is good, that's all I ever need. Yes, and so you are, you are a volunteer like we are yes. and work for yes. nothing, for dog yes, I, I work for the satisfaction that I know that we are making an impact and I know that my life is not lived only for myself that i am living for something greater than myself and with me you and our team in romania and the team in england and everybody else for me also uh, ringana is uh, very important because i also earn money with it and i'm trying to bring ringana more into romania and try to educate people about uh, consuming um, vegan products who don't have such a bad impact on the environment and who are natural and good for the body and cruelty-free. Yes, yes. And they, they're not tested our animals. 
I'm trying to shift their their image from industrial mm-hmm. cosmetics and everything that they use to more natural. Very cool. And um, so, yes, you are a volunteer like we are and everybody works for nothing because every money and I think this is important for everybody. All the donations are for the dogs, not for the people. Yeah. 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 Um, What is the thing what motivates you the most? Because why are you getting up every morning working so hard? Sometimes it's so frustrating and sometimes the people are not nice and the job is so hard, so many emotional. Why you are getting up every morning with a smile? What motivates you? The thing that motivates me the most is when I see that we take a dog from the ditch who is barely breathing, who can barely hold his head up and we take him and we care for him. We give him the best that we can. We give him love, good food and treatment. And then I start to see that his head is coming up and then he's getting up and then he's trusting us and then he is eating and then he's becoming more than just a dog who was supposed to die in a ditch. We are actually rescuing their lives And this is the most important thing for me. So the, the reason why I wake up every single day is, is that I feel, you know, like a doctor. Doctors wake up every day and they rescue human lives. Well, I feel like a vet. I wake up every day and I rescue dogs' lives. And it, it gives me great satisfaction to know that um, what we are doing is, as I said before, bigger than ourselves. I'm not waking up just for myself to make a holiday maybe once a year and then go back to a job that I don't like. I love what I do, even though I have to meet with stupid people and I have to explain to stupid people over and over again why they should castrate their dogs. The fact that I, I see how, um, how well the dogs are under us, under our care, is the biggest satisfaction. And then of course, how can I not be happy when I see the dogs on couches living the best life, going all over the world and having a best life that, that I could ever, ever offer them here in Romania. Great. And what was the, maybe, what was the greatest thing in any rescue you had in your past and what was the saddest thing? So the, the highlight and the flop. Oh, the, the best thing that we ever did was when we had the cleaning running when we installed the clinic. And I think that was the, the biggest moment because I, we built the clinic while I was pregnant and it was so hard and so emotional and so stressful. I don't know if, if the, the, follower, the followers are, if you have children, but when you were pregnant and when I was pregnant, I was half stupid <laughs> and my brain wouldn't work. You know, usually I'm working at 100 frames per second. I know what I want to do. I make quick decisions. I'm very grounded and I, I have a good feelings. And when I was pregnant, I didn't have so many good feelings. And when we finally finished the cleaning and I, I gave birth to Cesar, I said, greatest accomplishment. <laughs> uh, the, the other thing that was really, really great was when we moved the dogs. Because when we moved the dogs from the old shelter to the new shelter, we had a deadline. It was 38 of August, uh, 30, 31 of August, and we moved the dogs on 31, exactly. We made three or four roads to load all the dogs and to bring them the, the, to the shelter. And I think at 10 o'clock at night, I closed the, the fence, the door, and I said, okay, we're done. I still have the picture with me and Christy, dirty from head to toe, e- extremely tired, but happy that we were finally Uh, you know, we, we finally managed to move them into a, a clean place, into a bigger place. And the saddest, yeah, the, the saddest moments are every time we lose an animal. The, the, that's the saddest. When we have to bury an animal, it, it's, it's sad because I always think, you know, what if, could, could, could we have done better? Or what if we got to the dog more in time? What if we used, you know, a different vet or a different medicine or, you know, I still think about dogs that died maybe two years ago and we didn't have the treatments that we have now. So, yeah, yeah. whenever we lose a life, it's sad. 
Yes, yes, of course. I I think also because you have so many dogs, but you know to every dog uh, the name and the story and yeah. and when they where they are. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's true. Every single one of the German volunteers who ever come to Romania ask me, where's that dog? Where's that dog? And I say, on the left, on the right, on that color, in the back. <laughs> and they are, how can you know everything? But I know because I, I get emotionally involved with everybody. I mean, I have one son, but 250 babies. <laughs> and they are, all, they are all a part of me. And I remember them all, of course. When they go to Germany, you change the name so often. And I, of course, I remember the Romanian name, but um, the, they, they impact my life so much. And they are always, every single dog that we rescue is a life lesson to me. Because dogs are so incredible with, you know, they have the perfect mindset. You know, they live, li they live in the present. They are always uh, happy no matter what they get or what happens to them. And th they always see the best in people which is yes. the, 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 their incredible asset. And I, I've always, like for Caramel, because I think everybody knows Ayak, Caramel, he has, has been an incredible lesson for me because he never gave up. Even though he was tied to the pole for days, he was dehydrated and malnourished. He was skinny. When he heard a car coming, he said, this is my home. This is my rescue. I'm going to bark with the every single last piece of energy that I have until somebody rescues me and that somebody did rescue him and he brought him to us and now he's getting better and better and you know people sometimes they do deserve the second chance and you should give that second chance because you never know who deserves it or not unless you try that's true and um, how do you make the decision if you find a dog How do you decide, okay, this dog we will help, this dog we will help not? What, is, what things are important to, to make this decision? It's very hard to make the decision. You, usually, we're, we're always full. Because if I want to go out right now, in the middle of the night, and to uh, go with the car, just in three towns near my town, I would fill the car with 20 dogs like that. Because there's so many. So we usually take if we have space, if we have fosters, if we have the money, if we have the resources, if we, we know we can get support from people, from donations. There are a lot of things to consider, but, you know, there is no emergency that we ever found that we said no. Okay, so every time we found a way, we did something, I made magic happen i don't know i pray to the universe to god to my caretakers to my fosters please 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 have this one dog help 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 and eventually people when they see that our work is for so many years now because we've been here for five years you know everybody from around russia knows my name knows about our organization and you know when i promise i do something then i do so if i say please take this dog for two weeks because in two weeks we have some dogs leaving to Germany and then I have space, then they do it and then they finally understand why it's important to foster because in Romania, fostering actually saves lives. In, in Germany or in Western Europe, when you foster a dog, you actually give the dog more chances to get adopted. But here, if you foster a dog, you take them from certain death to a life. Yes. That's true, that's true. And if a dog dies in the shelter, what are you doing with this dog then when he's dead? We, honestly, we bury the dog because I think this is the most, the, the thing we can do to honor them in, in, a, in a way. You know, we, we all gather around the dog, we dig a big hole, we say some nice, th nice things about the dog and then we put some ground over and then the dog stays with us and the memory of the dog stays with us for the rest of their lives. And we have a wall in the shelter. When, when you go inside the clinic, we have a wall with all the nice memories and all the, the things that we, we went through from the beginning of the organization until now. But we also have a small corner where we put pictures of the dogs that have died to remember us that we always have to do better and we always have, we always have to make more and to improve more for them. Okay, okay, yeah. 
I think it's important to to know what happened if a dog dies so that they yes that that they have respect also after they are yeah, yeah. yes yeah. And, and, and we remember them and and we we learn uh, from their deaths so that we if if there was something medical we can make it better for the next ones and usually a lot of dogs die from from medical conditions or because they were too old that's why all these are my my favorite dogs and that's why i i implore everybody who wants to adopt a dog please please adopt the oldies because you cannot imagine the hard life that they have had in romania the hard winters with minus 20 degrees the the people always pushing them away hitting them throwing stones and sticks after them not finding food for so many days M maybe almost frozen to death in, in some times and they survived and now they are 8 10 12 years old i think they deserve the very best in life i think they deserve a couch and they deserve a family and they deserve respect for enduring so much hardship in romania so please for me adopt the oldies yes that's great that's true it's true they should have the feeling of playing in the garden and cuddling on a sofa and have it warm and enough food all day and so yes that's true um but how do you can you live with the thing that you can't rescue every dog it, i think it's very hard to know that fact that you have always a problem you can't rescue every dog i actually was a little bit depressed when i started the rescue five years ago because i i realized that it's impossible to rescue all the dogs that we find and all the dogs that need help because we get uh, rescue requests from all over Romania it's not just from the city of Brussels but i made a decision when i was depressed i i woke up and i said okay i'm going to do the best that i can with what i have to offer quality and not quantity because it's very easy to crowd 500 dogs and to not be able to care for them but i think it's more important that the ones that we rescue we do the best that we can for them and there will always there are always going to be dogs and animals that suffer in the world that that's not something that i can control or you can control or anybody can control but we can control the fate and the destiny and the lives of the ones that come through our gates and the ones that we rescue so we try we really try to rescue as many as we can that is why we are building the belpen house and the kitten house and that's why we want to build more for the oldies and everything all our plans are for building more so we can rescue more but we want to do it also with the mind and the heart not always with the heart if you do it only with your heart then it's easy to lose your mind and to start making mistakes and to put the the lives of the dogs that you already rescue at risk and this is something that i don't want to do so i want to be organized and i want to know that the dog that we rescue from the street we make a dog out of it you know and we we stand them up to the best homes and the best life so there's another mantra that i have and i want to share with you is that when somebody adopts a dog from romania they should always keep in mind that they are actually rescuing two animals they are rescuing the one that they adopt and the one that is going to take his place so the more adoptions we have the more we can rescue that's true that's true and um, you are now five years in rescuing and i think at the beginning it was very emotional and it was very hard and um, if you are now longer in rescuing isn't uh, is it easier now is it not so emotional now or is it as hard as it was at the beginning it's emotional uh, for the same you know you, you can never get used to the emotional uh, pull that that the dogs bring with you because every case is different every treatment is different every time a dog leaves is different and even now after five years i found my soul dog it's walter you know <laughs> he came I love him and I'm still going to send him away to his adoption because I know he will have the best life. You 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 never get used to it. Some things become more routine and some things become easier like 
uh, cleaning, uh, some some treatments that are usual to give, and that part is yes easier. But the the feelings that you have when when a dog that is in in horrible shape comes uh, through the door and you have to do everything that you can to make that dog better, th that that never goes away. The anger that you feel towards the people who let this dog become like this, the the feeling of powerless when you know that. You know, no matter how much you try, you can only change so many minds and so many lives. Of course, it's hard. But I, I try to always, always keep my, my eye on the ball. You know, that's what the American thing. Keep the eye on the ball. The reason why we do this is far more important than my emotions, my ego, my, my feelings. You know, the, the saving them is, is the most important thing. And put them aside. You, no matter what emotions I have, I come home, I cry, I say oh, a lot of bad words, <laughs> and maybe I make an angry video. I post it on Facebook. Some people understand, some don't. It gets shared. We change some minds, and then we move on and on and on. And my goal is in ten years to change the minds of. A lot more people, so that in 10 years when my son grows, he will not um, see the things that I see now on the streets. He will, he will grow up into a, a city and, and the towns around where people are more empathic, where they, where they understand that castration is the only way to stop abandonment and to stop the, the throwing away of puppies. Because in, in Romania, it's so easy when, when a dog gives birth to just put the puppies in a bag or in a cardboard box and to take them in the, in the uh, further away from the town. Yeah, in the field like we found last time the puppies, yes. Exactly. When, when you were here last time, it was, it was the perfect example and it was right next to our shelter. So I think somebody left them there intentionally. And I'm very happy that they are now adopted. But this happens all the time, you know. And to that man, I want to say, What do you think is going to happen in six months? It's nature, man. It's nature. It's going to happen again and again until you spay the dog. And with you, we have the, the ongoing spaying campaign. And it, for, for the people that are, are taking the dogs, it's free. So honestly, I don't, it, I, I, I understand what's keeping them from, from bringing the dogs. It's religion, it's their mentality. They think it's uh, nature and uh, people shouldn't, do these kind of unnatural things. <laughs> But it's, it's all 30 years ago mentality. We are living in the present. We have had smartphones. We're soon going to be able to teleport, for God's sake. Okay? So we should be able to spray all the dogs in our backyards. That's true. And um, sometimes we, when we are in Romania with you, we also go to the killing station where they, where they kill dogs and Mm, the people ask if it becomes more easily to go there if you go often there, or is it always hard as it was mm -hmm. at the first time? You, you know me, I go inside and I wait at the, at the gate. I never go to, to see the dogs. I never go because I cannot choose. For me, it's, it's the most impossible thing to do. It's like I, I choose who lives and who dies and I cannot do it. So I, I stop in front of the first kennel. Usually in the first kennel there are very big dogs or puppies and then i just stay there and you go you make your videos you come back you choose your dogs i just see the dogs actually when they come out of the killing station and then i am always always uh, um very emotional when i see how they eat they eat like they've never eaten food in their lives most of them are super skinny Most of them have a lot of skin problems. Most of them are hurt because they fight with each other, because they don't have, get so much food. In the public shelter, they throw food like this. They take a, they take a bag of food and they just take like, like a glass like this. They put it in the food and they throw it on the ground. Who eats? Eats. Who doesn't eat? Doesn't eat. And that's it. If they find dead dogs in the morning because they fought to the death, they take the dead dog and they throw it away. If they don't, if for them it's easier, you know, it's, it's another dog that died and they don't have to put the dog to sleep or kill him, you know. If they find puppies that are dead because of parvo or some other diseases, again, they don't care. It, this is life. They just take the dog 
and they throw it to the trash and that's it. It's yeah. it's horrible. For me, it's horrible. I, 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 I think one time, two times since we know each other, I went with you all the way and it was the time we rescued Bailey and I cried like stupid because I knew Bailey from before, from Prashmer because we wanted to rescue him. And I think the second time was when we uh when we rescued uh Henry who had the problem with his eye and and I only I only came because you asked me you know can you come and see what's wrong with this dog but normally no I cannot see them I cannot because I it, something breaks inside of me you know something breaks when when I go there and I see that I am powerless I think this is the feeling that I hate most of all in the world is for me to feel powerless to go there and to know that I cannot I feel like crying uh, to know that I cannot um, rescue them all. And I know that they're bringing dogs every single day. This is just, it, it's killing me. And I, I want to be happy and powerful and, and empowered for the animals that we have at our shelter. Yes, that's true. That's true. So, Yes, it's a really shit situation with the killing stations. I don't want to talk more about that because I yeah. I will start crying too. So yes. then you we have a crying live stream. It's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so people you don't cry. want to see us cry. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, you cry all the time because it, 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 you cannot not cry. You know, I often yeah. I laugh with you on the car and I say, "Oh, you're gonna cry," <laughs> but but it's just because inside I know that I feel the same way, and I I also want to cry. I I. And when you think about it, this is just one public shelter that we're going yeah. in. And you think there are hundreds in Romania and it's it's happening all over Romania. And there's you have so much power, you know, how how much can you do? You're just yes. one for one organization. You have so many donors, so much support. If anybody wants to help, please donate because your donations go straight to the dogs and without money nobody helps you know yeah. what i mean it's just everything costs even in romania where the costs are lower everything that we want to buy everything that we want to do every single treatment that we we give to the dog everything costs that's And true yeah. without money you cannot make improvements without money you cannot go ahead and and rescue more and make sustainable wealth I think now the people maybe can imagine how it is to go into a killing station and see all the dogs and know you can't rescue all. Even if we just talk about that, we both start to cry so everybody knows how hard it is. But it's very important to do that because to show how it is and to educate the people and rescue the dogs from there and and to do something to change that situation. And I think... The last time we were there, the the man from the killing station said something very important to you. You remember? Yes. You said to him, it's yes, the best yes. thing he said. The best compliment I ever got. The, 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 the vet there, um, he said that uh, he doesn't see so many dogs on the streets that he needs to capture. And that was, you know, like, oh my God. That's great. My dream is to put them out of business. And this is the way we are putting them out of business. Rescuing the dogs before they go to the killing station and making a sustainable uh, castration campaign so that the dogs that already exist cannot become more and more and more. And then it will eventually stop. But the, the feeling when I leave the, the killing station is very bad. But then the dogs come. I get angry when I see how how hungry they are and it takes a week or two for them to finally understand that they are safe and they are rescued and here they receive love. You you cannot imagine how it is for us to go inside a kennel and the dogs all hide from you and they want to go small and they want to go into a corner and they cannot and the the, the panic and the the look in their eyes when they they see the shovel, you know, when you go inside. And then after a week, they start to decompress and they start to understand that, okay, these people, they're not like the other people that we've met. And th these people are good and they bring me food and they call me by my name and they say nice things to me. And when I go to them, I receive a nice 
warm pat on the head and maybe a kiss and maybe understanding and now i think they also feel better because we give them the warming and the fling and the, their bodies don't hurt anymore you know because they we treat all their wounds and we give them vitamins and supplements and the old dogs get get so many uh, supplements for their bones so they don't feel the pain in winter time and after about 2 weeks that's when magic starts to happen you know that's that's when when you see them coming out of their shell and then you you start to assess them and then you start to see that they're actually nice dogs and they actually want to love people but they never got the chance they they had such a traumatic past that they never understood that people can also be good and then you know we work with them until they get adopted and now you know when i see dogs like aurora who was really really scared or flair who was again very very scared and now they're both really happy and they want to cuddle and it took them longer than the the other dogs for them to understand and when i will finally see these dogs in their homes on a couch that's you know when when i know that the circle is complete yeah and, and it, it's just um what we start here in romania has a happy ending in in germany or in england or where we we also have happy endings in romania but i think we've had in 5 years 20 dogs getting adopted because people in romania only want breed dogs and they they think that you know the stray dog is just a stray dog and he's filled with diseases and he's garbage but i have to say look at me i'm very healthy and i work with stray dogs every day they have nothing they are the the strongest more resilient most happy and most thankful dogs on the planet and the smartest dogs on the planet also a fun fact one of the dogs who got adopted in romania was a dog from your husband where you met your husband the first time yes 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 this is how we met he came to the shelter to want to adopt a dog and i gave him bush 70 centimeters black dog cute <laughs> and with bush i also came along because we were uh, at a package you know bush and me <laughs> <laughs> yes it's really yeah. funny maybe you can tell a bit about why do you have in romanian so many stray dogs why because it's in germany we don't have dogs on the streets who are homeless but you have uh, homeless dogs you have so many puppies on the streets and because of that you have killing stations why why is there a difference We have five minutes for this. So I go through thirty years ago or just seven years ago. And so uh, you you know that Romania was a, a communist uh, country thirty uh, years ago, and uh, in the communists wanted to build a lot of apartment blocks, and so they tore down a lot of houses. And when the houses went away, all the dogs that were inside the yards went on the street. and then they started multiplying with each other and the situation got out of control apartment blocks were built so they had nowhere to go and this is how the stray dog originated in romania stray dogs are actually dogs that lived in yards 30 years ago but then they didn't have a home anymore romanians 30 years ago would never even think about bringing a dog inside of their house The situation went like this until 2013 when they passed the law the euthanasia law when they where they said that you can take dogs from the street go take them to public shelters and kill them after 14 days if nobody comes and takes them and since 2003 until now hundreds of thousands of dogs have been killed in Romania all over the the country and the situation isn't getting any better because instead of uh, spaying and releasing or making spaying campaigns for the dogs that have owners we are taking the ones that survive and killing them and making room for others because they keep multiplying and it's the the number of dogs in Romania hasn't actually decreased it's actually the same or it has increased because you're we're not addressing the the source we're addressing the the end source and of course a lot of people have uh, so so the government has has uh, allocated a lot of money for this public shelter so public shelters are actually pretty rich and they they get a lot of money for taking care of the stray dog problem you know why 
taking care yeah and while while we are non governmental we are, we're non profit and we're taking dogs and we're struggling to get donations and we're struggling to give them the best care and for us a puppy with parvo is a huge tragedy and i've explained in in the public shelter it's normality you know it's just something that happens i think it won't change until people uh, change their mentality the government isn't going to do something about it it's it's clear to me in so many years that there's not going to be an animal police or there's not going to be a, a way of reprimanding the people who are doing harm to animals or who are in spaying or castrating their dogs even if we have a law the law states that you have to castrate your dogs but nobody is giving fines for not castrating them so it will take a long time that's why i say 10 years So when my son is 10, I really hope around Brashov and I'm doing the best that I can that around Brashov at least we have set a good example of how we are uh, managing this situation so that then we can multiply it around and around and around until we reach Romania. This is the only way. You you as an example and then making it more and more and bigger and bigger until you end it. Yes. In Germany, in Germany, in Holland and everywhere else around Europe, the government got involved and then you had to do something, you know? You you had to castrate your dog. You you got um in, in Holland the greatest example is that you are uh, you you pay less taxes if you adopt a dog. I think if this would happen in Romania, the situation would be completely different. I think the important thing to say is um, why castration is so important in Romania because in Germany it's not such a big topic topic um, but in Romania most of the dogs are living in the yard and the gate is open very often oh, that yes. means in the day the dog are going on the street and make rounds and meet the neighborhood dogs and if they are not castrated and they yeah, are having babies <laughs> Yes. And because yes. of that, castration is on your streets so important because yes. if they are allowed to go around and meet all the other dogs, they should not make babies because you have such a big uh, stray dog problem. And yes. so I think the two most important things are educate the people that castration is nothing bad and that it will um, not make the dog uh, sleepy or not barking, not yeah. aggressive lazy oh yeah you hear so many things yeah and yeah because romanians think that my dog is smart you know they they say oh my dog is smart he goes out he comes back until he doesn't come back because he's hit by a car or until he doesn't come back because he fights with other dogs to to mount a female dog that is in heat and then the other dog kills him or does something bad to him you know it's uh It, it is really really important to get straight because so many of the, of the dogs that we rescue they are coming from the towns around Brasov so in Brasov because the people have a higher level of education they have understood we have a lot of castration going on in Brasov but outside Brasov where our parents live and you know the rural area of of outside Brasov that's where we have a problem that's where we need to address the problem because people don't want to invest the time and energy to bring the dogs to the to the castration room to the clinic and they don't have a car or they say it's just nature or it's against the law or the priest says it's it's not healthy or whatever reasons yes. on the countryside it's a bigger problem and i think because of that education also with kids is so important and you want to yes. educate kids also at the shelter and in schools yes. and also teach them that a dog can be a family member that you can uh, put a collar on and walk with him on a leash and play and make tricks and teach yes. and and give the dog laugh not just live in the yard and bark right yes this this is something that we did before corona we had a bunch of kids we we, we even had a uh, the prison we had a contract with the local prison and the the prisoners came to our uh, shelter and they walked with the dogs and it was part of their social rehabilitation 
uh, we had children from an orphanage that came to the shelter and they came uh, two Christmases ago and they sang carols and they played with the dogs and then we gave them all a collar and a leash and they started walking the dogs on the, um, on the, in front of their house and they started interacting with the dogs. So I, of course, education is really, really important. And now Corona is, has hit so many areas because we have so many plans for this year with education. We, we, were, we had three separate groups that were supposed to come to the shelter this summer. And we were supposed to make education with them. And they couldn't come anymore just because Corona wouldn't allow such big groups and everybody was homeschooling and online teaching and everything else. But it's not going to be forever, you know, Corona. It's here, it's going to leave, and then eventually we will start again. We, we, I think um, educating the young people of Romania today is part of our 10-year plan and is going to make a difference when the children that are now 6 to 10 are going to be teenagers or adults, and they will be able to decide for themselves. Also, we had the situation where the children went home and asked the mother, mommy, but why don't we castrate the, the cat or the dog? You know, why, why are we letting the cat or the dog make puppies instead of getting her castrated? Because I've learned at school that it's, it's stupid to do this, you know? And the mother eventually castrated the animals because the, the children came with something more, some more information home. Really cool, really cool. I think it's it's the right way to educate in castration, yes. Now, you said Corona. Corona is a big topic also in Romania. I think you have bad numbers. And mm -hmm. now the winter is coming. Mm, so maybe you can tell us what means winter in Romania. Um, how is the actual situation and on which projects are you working actually? Uh, with Corona, we've had a decline in volunteers. We've had a decline in donations because so many people have lost their jobs. Uh, we've had to split in groups. We couldn't go all at the same time when the Corona started because we were afraid. What if we infect one another? Now everybody, when, because now we have more knowledge, everybody goes. We wear a mask all the time. Uh, our meetings are outdoors. Um, Winter time in Romania is going to be hard, as it is every single year. No matter how much we try to keep our water supplies running, to keep the buckets of water from the dogs not freezing, um, there's always going to be temperatures that are so low that you cannot fight it. Last year, we had minus 35 degrees, the lowest temperatures. At that point, the water from the buckets which was completely frozen, and you couldn't do anything about it. And for this winter, my biggest wish is that we have the uh, Welpen house built. We want to build a puppy house where we can keep safe and warm this winter all the puppies that we rescue. Because we find so many and that our fosters are so few, we can only rescue some. But if we were to build the, the Welpen house, we would be able to rescue more. And also the Welpen house comes with a kitten house. A cat, a cats and house, and um, the cats are also um, animals that need our care. For now, we have a lot of cats that we rescued, but we keep them all over the place and in the shelter and in fosters, and it's very hard to manage. So having a kitten house would would help us keep everybody in the same place, be able to manage their health and their well-being much safer and better. And again, this house would have everything. They would have toys. They would be able to play inside. It would have very good cleaning, very good disinfectant. They would have worms because we have a heating system and we could also heat this house. So they would actually live like inside a house. And this and is... Yeah. The web, web house? <laughs> in the web. <laughs> I said Sorry. it in English. Well, but... so, Welpen House um, is, uh, is a house with two floors. On the floor one are the dogs, the puppies from dogs, and on floor two are the cats. So, yes. your, which you mean is a big house for both cats and yes, baby dogs. a big house for exactly, but keep them separately. Cats because they're lighter and you can carry them up the stairs, and dogs because they're heavier, you keep them on the ground. But and in, you started in, already building, right? We already started, yes, but we still need uh, all your help and all your donations to finish it. 
We're doing the best that we can. We've also made our own fundraising in Romania with Brush of Heroes. It's a it's a, a program that we always uh, go to each year. So we started. We want to finish it, but we need help because if we want to make it good. And to make it good, you have to invest. But this investment would mean that we would be rescuing 1,000 lives each year. And I think this is the most important. You know, when you are donating, always keep in mind this. When was the last thing, time you donated and you knew that your donation was rescuing 1,000 lives? I think this is once in a lifetime opportunity for all the donors to be a part of something so big and so important and life changing. That's true. Maybe I can say one sentence in German uh, to everybody so that they know how they can help uh, with the Welpenhaus. Um, auf unserer Webseite Hunderettung Europa, www.hunderettung-europa.de findet ihr ganz viele Infos zum Welpenhausbau und da seht ihr auch, wie ihr spenden könnt. Da ist die Kontoverbindung und ähm, jeder Cent kommt, kommt eins zu eins bei den Hunden an und je mehr spenden, je schneller zusammenkommen, desto schneller können wir das Welpenhaus auch fertig bauen. Also vielleicht habt ihr auch Lust, jetzt zur Weihnachtszeit äh, Welpen zu Hause zu schenken und wenn ihr keinen Hund adoptieren könnt, dann eben, indem ihr den Welpenhausbau unterstützt. Okay. <laughs> Let's I switch understand. in English again. <laughs> yeah, no, I um, <laughs> But in German, I am very fast. So. Yes. <laughs> And we are running out of time. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, the puppy house is something, um, a big project actually, and um, after the puppy house is ready, You have another project in mind. Mm -hmm. um, it's maybe it's the opposite. It's yes, it's the opposite. It's an only house <laughs> because I told you my favorite animals are the oldies, and we we were lucky enough to be able to uh, expand our shelter, and now we can uh, build a, an old house. So an an, an oldie house for all the like dogs. a like a geriatric, like a, in German, like it's an altenheim. Yes. Altenheim. Altenheim. Yes, we want to build an Altenheim. It's um, it's a place where we want to bring all the old dogs because the old dogs they all they want to do is just lay down on a couch or on a on a bed, a dog bed, and just sleep and eat good food and get massages and cuddles and I imagine it a, a big space of 120 square meters where every old dog has his own place and we would have uh, couches big and small where a lot of people can come and volunteer and just cuddle with the oldies and show them love so this can be like a transitional uh, stage before they get adopted because for me it would be um, it would be it, it, it's always so hard to know that we have all these that can maybe they can die in Romania without never knowing the worth of a house. And this is what we're trying to build, actually. We were trying to build the worth of a house in Romania until they get adopted so that every single oldie that we have can get to experience it for just even a short period of time, what it's like to stay inside warm and cozy and good and not be stressed and not have so much noise and not have... Yes. A, a, a shelter experience, you know. I think also. Tough. I think for the oldies, it's very hard to live in a cage or at the shelter because it's so loud, and also their immune system is very bad. bad yes. And it's cold in the winter time, and for an oldie, the winter can mean dead. And yes. if we would have a puppy house, it will rescue puppy lives. And if we would have the oldie house, it would rescue the oldie lives. And they. Yes would get a chance to get adopted. The, shelter, the ones that are fit to stay outside, indoor, outdoor, and they are healthy and good to travel anytime. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So two very important projects are... New projects that all need your help. Yeah, that's true. And how can people help you? By um, donating to <laughs> Because we are in Romania, we cannot um, receive German donations. So it's easier if everybody donates to Hunderettung Europa and then the, your donations go one-to-one -to, -one to our projects in Romania. We, between organizations, can make these donations one to another and it's very transparent and very easy to make and everybody can follow the progress on the Hunderettung page to see what we are building. If, if you have... a uh, Uh, 
uh, watch just until far, you know, I am not the kind of woman to just stay around and say, okay, I will wait for something to happen. No, I go, I act, I do. Because I, I like progress and I like to know that each year is different and that we always improve things. And this year is about helping the, the categories that need our help the most, the puppies and the oldies. And so, I think everybody who knows mm -hmm. us from the past knows that you are not just a dreamer, that you, if you say we are doing that, then we are doing that. Like with the clinic, yeah. we built together the clinic, we uh, built the open shelter, the food storage room, the heating system. So we... The dog houses from last year, which are yes. very nice and warm. My caretakers go inside the dog houses and say, man, it's warm in here. <laughs> <laughs> because it is it is that they are made to last for the next 10 years it's it we try to make a project that are going to last the the test of time that we make them now and for the next 20 years i don't have to worry about them anymore and in the meantime they rescue lives we rescued lives so That's please true. follow us uh, see the progress and donate because This is the biggest gift that you can give us. Not, um, you know, sending food or, or um, some colors or leashes. The biggest gift that you can bring this year is to help us in, in our, um, in our uh, journey to let, rescue the puppies and the oldies. That's true. That's true. People can adopt, people can volunteer, people can foster. And the most important is to donate because uh, this is rescuing lives directly. Yes, that's true. Yeah, because we, we, we don't have, if it were a company, it would be easy, you know, you sell screws, you make more screws, you sell more screws, but <laughs> what can you do if when you rescue a dog, and then you have to take him from, from beyond zero, you know, because you have to first treat him, and then you start to vaccinate him warm, deeply, etc, etc. This is why we need help, when, and the, this help constantly, when you, when you help us constantly, We constantly can make improvements. We constantly can can uh, make the shelter bigger and better. And of course, I say this every time, everybody who wants to come and volunteer to see what we do with uh, all the donations that we receive is more than welcome to come. And I think actually not, has... actually not because of Corona, because no, we can't of course, not, be not, back not in Corona. the future. Next year, hopefully, Romanians are going to wear the mask normally and not under the nose. And then <laughs> we won't have so many cases and, and people are going to be able to come. So it, uh, we, our shelter is always open to anybody. And I think everyone who has ever been here has, has left with a, a good impression and very emotional, but very charged that they know that together we are doing good things. That's true. That's true. And your biggest wish for the future? Oh, my biggest wish? I told you, in 10 years, I want to see not so much suffering on the streets. I want to see people educated. I want to see more dogs inside the house. I want to see veterinarians getting involved as much as we are in educating the people in microchipping and spaying their dogs. I want to see the government getting involved. And I want to see NGOs in Romania coming together and working side by side for the greatest, for the, for the same goals. Great, great. Okay. So we are at the end. Just mm. one question and you have to answer fast. Um, <laughs> and don't think about the answer. If you would be an animal, which animal would you be? I would be a dog. <laughs> and why? <laughs> Because I, I have learned from dogs that I should always focus on the good things. I should always be present and focus on the now. And I should always be optimistic that good things are always going to happen if you have a good heart and a, a, a good mind. And also, I laugh a lot. You know, my laugh is like the tail wagging of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for answering all these questions. Thank you for your time. Thank you for caring you. for the dogs and for your very, very great work. Um, you got a lot of compliments in the comments here. Yeah, I, I, I watch sometimes, but I, I cannot, I, I couldn't follow everything. <laughs> I was looking at you because I miss you. You are such a, a good friend of mine and you often come to Romania. And now it's been such a long time and really I, I miss you. I miss Karina. I miss everybody. Whenever you come to Romania, I'm happy because I feel that 
you know, we are more together, we are more connected, you you are closer to our struggles here every single day, and when you leave, big things happen all the time, you know, so we miss you, everybody misses you. Yes, we miss you too, and I really hope that the corona situation will end up very fast and we can come to Romania and visit you Not just in a live stream, but mm -hmm. the live stream was very good because we laughed together, we cried together, we talked a lot. Yeah, like it, it's exactly always. what we do when we meet. It's the same. The only difference is sometimes we eat Michi, you know, because Michi is mandatory now. <laughs> Everybody that comes. So thank you so much to you and thank, thank you everybody also. watching us. And if you want to help us, um, I will save this video. You can share the video on your channels, in your stories to show other people what we are doing and you can help and donate. You can adopt a dog, you can foster a dog, you can volunteer. If you want to donate or have more information about our work, you can go on hunderettung-europa.de. Um, I will set also the link into my bio and into the comments so you can find it there. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Delia. Thank you. Have a nice Thank evening. You. Give your son Shazza a kiss. Yeah, and I will. He's sleeping we, now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see us very soon. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.